Hi folks, welcome back. Thank you for watching. Please do hit subscribe if you haven't done so yet. It really does help when you do that. So today folks, welcome to my white Fender Tele. It's one of my main guitars. I've used it on the channel so much over the years. It sounds absolutely incredible. But this guitar does have a slight problem. And I'll show you what that is now. So if you play it down the bottom of the neck, sounds absolutely fine. Halfway up the neck, sounds absolutely fine. But as you get above the 12th fret, this happens. Boink. The note that you're fretting completely chokes out, especially when you bend it due to the radius of the board. Now, the reason for that essentially is this area of the neck is too high relative to the nut and the saddles. It kind of has a bit of a bulge in it like that. So if you look at it in cross section, essentially the neck is angled downwards too much. So it creates a lump here and the notes choke out when you fret them. Now, in order to solve that, you can do a few different things. The first and easiest thing to do is simply to raise the action because it brings the strings further away from the fret, creates more clearance, and it's less likely to choke out. Now, I have tried that with this guitar to solve that problem, but it's quite a severe problem on this guitar. So to raise the action up to a point that it stops that from happening, the strings are about that far off the neck and it just makes the guitar completely unplayable. So if it's only a slight buzz, that can be a solution, but not for me. The second thing you can do is much more expensive and invasive, but if you take the guitar to a luthier, you could try it yourself if you want, but I wouldn't want to, they can do a couple of different things when they're doing a full refret. The first thing they can do is if you have an unfinished board, it's much more tricky with a lacquered board like this, but if you have a fender with a rosewood board, for example, when they take the frets off, they can plane some of this wood away to create a bit of a drop off at the top of the neck. So it lowers it all down and gets rid of that bump. And also when they put the new frets on, they can leave the frets nice and tall down by the nut and kind of grind them away a little bit more to add even more drop off up the top. But of course it will fundamentally change your guitar and it'll be very expensive. So it can be a solution, but it's kind of a last resort. Now the third thing you can do, and for full disclosure here, I've done this for years, so I know for a fact that at the end of this video we're gonna end up with a guitar that's playable is you can essentially, on a Fender guitar, shim the neck. Now on a Gibson, it's a set neck, you can do it, but again, it's a luthier job. They have to completely remove the neck and reset it at a different angle. But with a bolt-on neck like this, the beauty of that is you can essentially put something in the neck pocket to prop the neck up and raise the angle. And Fender themselves did this way back, you know, even back in the 50s. One of the reasons Leo liked a bolt-on neck was because you could shim it and adjust the pitch angle very, very easily. Now, there's essentially two ways of doing this and the first one is the kind of the crux of this video I suppose which is the one people say isn't the best. So here I've got a piece of cardboard, actually two pieces of cardboard, cut to the shape of the top half of the neck pocket. So we can put that in the neck pocket and it will essentially sort of ram between the neck and the pocket and raise the angle of the wood. And of course you don't want to do this on the full size of the neck pocket because all you'll do is raise the whole neck up. You won't adjust the angle at all. Now, this is a very quick and easy way of shimming a neck to use like a bit of cardboard or paper or I had folded up post-it notes in here for years. But people say, and this is what I want to look into in this video, that shimming a neck using this method, it essentially uh, destroys the tone of the instrument, so say. It destroys the sustain because you have reduced contact in the neck pocket and almost worse than that, which I can't really measure because I've never had a problem with this, but because the guitar is covered in lacquer, but inside the neck pocket, the wood is completely bare. If you ram the front of the neck up, it leaves a gap and moisture can get in there and swell the neck joint and cause no end of problems to the instrument. So people say that doing it with cardboard is a very bad idea, but other people say that it just solves the problem and doesn't change the sound of the instrument at all. So first and foremost today, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna play a few things on this guitar as it is, staying down here, obviously, because otherwise it'll just go doink, and just record a couple of riffs, some clean, some dirty, with the guitar as it is, with a proper full connection, albeit a problematic one. Then I'm going to shim it with cardboard to solve the problem, but in theory, we should destroy the tone of the instrument and it shouldn't sound like my guitar anymore. But there is another way of shimming a neck, which is more expensive, but on a bolt-on neck, it's nice and easy to do. This is a professional shim made by Stumac. And essentially what it is, is a wedge of wood. And it's very hard to see this on the camera, but this end is paper thin and this end is a lot thicker. So in doing this, we can, can, we can maintain a solid connection 
or in the neck pocket. So the wood is angled, but we will have it bolted down nice and hard. There won't be any gaps for air to get in, and we should get a transfer of vibrations from the neck into the body. So this should be a much more kind of pleasing solution to shimming a neck because it shouldn't change the tone at all. But is it necessary? I think that was about 15 pounds. Is it necessary to spend that money or can we just use a piece of cardboard and be done with it? So that's what I'm gonna to do today, folks. I'm going to play the guitar as it is, shim it with the cardboard and then shim it with the Stumac professional shim and see whether there's any tonal differences between any of it. We're going to ultimately fix the problem, but is it going to change the sound of this guitar? So a very nerdy video today, folks, a very long rambly intro, but hopefully this should be interesting and put a sort of forum myth to rest, fingers crossed. So without further ado, folks, let's get some shims in this guitar. folks. Now, please do comment underneath and let me know what you were hearing today. I'd love to get your thoughts and opinions in the comments section on this. But to my ears, there was a tonal difference between those three excerpts, wasn't there? Now, it wasn't a big difference. It wasn't like having a completely different guitar or putting a new pickup in or anything like that. But to my ears, having no shim in there, it, the guitar had a more zingy high end, but it sounded a bit thinner low down. Now, the cardboard shim, it kind of made everything sound a bit muffled up top and a bit more kind of dead and you know, just thuddy overall, I thought. But the Stumac shim, it sounded a little bit more rolled off up top compared to not having a shim in there, but it actually gave the guitar more weight, I felt. I was actually really enjoying that extra weight today. So that might just be my ears playing tricks on me. Please do let me know in the comments if you agree or not. But, you know, the fact that I can now play this guitar above the 12th fret, the Stumac shim is the way to go for me. It definitely uh, doesn't leave a gap in the neck pocket. You can see in the photo that's on screen now that um, the new neck angle kind of follows the contour of the shim. So that's really good. Gives a nice firm contact. It looks professional as well. And yeah, I'm enjoying the extra weight that that seems to be giving me. But as I said, let me know in the comments if I'm hearing things or not. But for now, thank you ever so much for watching, folks. I hope this video was interesting and useful for you. Please do carry on subscribing. I know I always say it, but it does make a huge difference when you do that. And I will see you next time. Bye-bye.